Brother lads, welcome back to Kosi's Arsenal Podcast. My name is Kosi. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are in other parts of the world. Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to a brand new video. Gonna be diving into the latest around Arsenal and a very huge story for us to talk about. Mikhailo Modric could be on the brink of joining a club in the Premier League. I didn't say Arsenal, I said a club in the Premier League because the Shakhtar CEO, Serge Palkin, has been in London to talk to Arsenal and a couple of other clubs about a transfer move and he says it's now 50-50, he can move in the winter transfer window. We're going to be diving into all that. Hit the like button, subscribe to the podcast as well. We are getting very close to 70,000. And this could be the biggest story I've done on this podcast in the last four months. Uh, ever since we signed Gabriel Jesus, I don't think I've done a really big story, but the Mikhailo Modric deal on the brink could be one of the biggest stories we are going to do on this podcast podcast i want your thoughts i want your reactions um in the comment box below do you think michelata can turn him into a number nine just like fabrizio has been talking about today in the last few hours that uh, that uh, we would like to see or we we are more likely to see uh, michelata turning Mikhail Modric into a number nine and then Martinelli staying on the left and Bukayo Saka staying on the right hand side of the pitch as well. So let's get into it. First and foremost, the Athletic have written and say that um, CEO Shakhtar Donetsk, uh, Palkin Saji has been in London this week to discuss a deal for Mikhail Modric um, with a few clubs. He actually says it is not only Arsenal. The Athletic said it's not on Arsenal. Uh, a couple of other clubs have also been interested. And they had negotiations, they had talks uh, with um, the CEO of Shakhtar Dynastic, Serge Palkin, while in London. But I'm going to say this, guys. I do not think Brentford, I do not think all these other clubs, Everton, Brentford, Brighton, that were, that were previously interested in Mikhailo Modric are still attractive to him as a player. And I also don't think they are still really, um, you know, in that financial zone to sign a player worth 45, 50 million euros in January. Look, the Premier League is crazy. It happens all the time, but I really don't think that is going to happen. But the more interesting part of this story is, you know, comes from the interview done by the Shakhtar CEO himself, where he said, um, we are in the process um, you know, we lead close this month. I don't know. We are in the process. It might be a 50-50 with regards to the winter transfer window. I don't know. I, I don't want to talk about figures now, but we are in discussions. That is according to uh, the Shakhtar CEO, Saji Parkin. Very huge story. Like I said, I don't think I've done a big story on the podcast uh, in a while, but this one is a big one. So let's start up by, you know, recapping what I said two, three days ago, that Shakhtar internally have already agreed to sell Mikhailo Modric. I think they've already understood the guy doesn't want to be here. The guy wants to move on and they know where he wants to go. They know that he, that, um, he wants to go to Arsenal. And I really don't think at the moment Shakhtar have a problem with selling to Arsenal. Like, our rapport with them is not really that good because I don't think we've really signed so many players from Shakhtar. But it isn't that bad. We've not really ruined our rapport with um, Shakhtar Dynastic. So they will, they, they will really not, never mind, selling to us. No, as long as they get their money, as long as... um. Uh, Mikhailo Modric gets what he wants. Uh, that is what all parties will want. Mikhailo moving to Arsenal, Arsenal getting the player, and Shakhtar getting their money. So there is an inside you know, acceptance that he will not be staying with them in January. Actually, you look at that interview, it has been done in December, right? And the question is, um, you know, can it be done? this month this is december this is not even january this is uh december unless otherwise he was meaning january but this is december and there is a likelihood that Mikhailo modri could complete his deal to arsenal even in december right so it's a 50 50 according to uh the ceo shakta donastic it can happen it might not happen um and it says the, the general transfer window is tricky we all know how tricky it is some clubs don't want to pay up the money some clubs don't want to cough up the money um and at times maybe they feel as shakta they might not get the money they want uh in this market but this is so smart and i think this is what arsenal to, uh, you know should do in this situation what shakta have done here they've come out and announced to the whole world we are selling 
this is our price so anyone interested in um in the player should actually come out and pay the money and get him i mean so many clubs use this strategy i, I think leon uh is one of those clubs that really use that strategy um i think ix as well used that strategy on us uh with um lisandro martinez they come out and said we want 60 million euros for lisandro martinez and he will be moving on uh in this in this summer he won't be staying with us any club interested should come actually and pay the money and arsenal went mm, we don't want to pay 50 million euros we don't want to pay 60 million euros so therefore we will actually simply uh walk away it was the same situation um with uh, the likes of lucas paqueta it was the same situation with the likes of uh, uh bruno guimarez leon's coming out to say this is our price the player can move give us the money and then you can have him and then arsenal went back in the you know in in, in the in, in the back room and we said the money we don't have that money we cannot pay uh, that money so what i think arsenal must do in this situation is react very very quickly shakta have actually set a 100 million euro asking price for the player that is absolute b Yes, they're never going to sell him for that much. They're never going to get 100 million euros um, in him. And they know that much, right? So the fact that they've come out and agreed that negotiations are taking place at the moment, they've also come out and convinced that uh, the player is now 50 50 per, you know, percent or 50 50 uh, you know, on, on chances of leaving. That shows you where they are standing. And, you know, you know I've already said in January, you need a willing buyer. You need a willing seller, and then you need a player who's ready for the move. I think right about now, we have everything in place for this deal to happen. We have a club in Arsenal that are really dying to sign Mikhail Modric. Fabrizio has been speaking today, and he said they love him. They really, really love him. Mikel Arteta sees him as a versatile forward who can play anywhere on that forward line. And uh, whether uh, whether Martin Lee is going to play down to the middle, whether Mikhail Modric is going to play down to the middle, it, we, we wait to see. But, but Fabrizio says it's going to be a very interesting, hard you know, hard question for Mikel Arteta to answer either way. And I, I, I don't disagree with him. I think if you have those three... Plus, Gabriel is coming back within some period of time. Plus, Aiden Ketia, plus Emil Smith were coming back. You're going to have a dilemma, but it's one of the sweet, sweet dilemmas. We will do our best 11 uh, when all those boys are back. We will do the best 11 Arsenal can field at the moment. But for now, let's focus on Mikhail Modric. So, um, uh, I've, I've seen a few stories as well in this line trying to say that the deal is actually very, very close. I might not say it is so close, but I'm going to say the fact that Shakhtar have actually come out uh, and publicly re revealed their interest to sell and pub publicly told the whole world that uh, their negotiations and discussions going on to sell the player I think there is very little there's a very little chance that it doesn't move in January. And I'm not really scared about all this talk about um you know these other clubs interested. Yeah, they could be interested. I got no problems with that. They could be interested, but can they match Arsenal's financial muscle in this January transfer window? Right? The other clubs interested in the player are Brentford uh, from the Premier League. Brentford I mean, they can pay 30 million euros because they were trying to do that um, in the summer. They're trying to pay 30 million euros for it, for him. I think that's a very that was a very very smart move because what they were thinking about Brentford is we are most certainly going to stay in the Premier League if we can get Mikhail Modric, get him to do the wonders Jack Grealish did with Aston Villa. We will have a chance to make 70 million. 8 million in terms of profit because for me right now you could buy him at 30 but in the next three years if this guy keeps on developing at the same uh, at the same rate at the same ratio he's gonna be a 100 million euro guy he's gonna be a 100 million pound signing for any club that will actually want him in the next three years Mikhail Modric that is how I look at him and that is how I actually believe he's going to be in the next three uh, four years. So Brentford for me are out of the picture. They will not actually sign him. And even if they were win to, uh, to, to uh, they were win to uh, they were to win the race, I still think Arsenal do have an advantage when it comes to being attractive at the moment. F you know, for speaking about speaking out loud, 
I think we can compete with Manchester City right now for a player. And I'm not sure if we beat them, but I think we can compete with them. If your Felix was on the market and uh, City, sh you know, you know, surely wanted him. I think Arsenal can provide competition right now because we have so many, so many lines to tell a player right now. We are leading the table. We want to win the Premier League. You're going to be part of a winning team and you're going to be part of a revolution because Mikel Arteta and what he's doing and whatever he's done at this Arsenal side, that is a true revolution, right? And uh, I, I don't care what other people think. I really don't care what people, uh, you know, what kind of, you know, uh, opinions other fans think and have about this club this is a revolution in place if we win the title even if we go back to the top four it's already enough to say Arsenal have gone through um, a revolution right so I, I think Brentford to be honest we are more attractive than them and uh, the fact that they don't have Alexander Zichenko the fact that uh, they're not even in the top four I don't see them try it's the same thing with Everton I, I, I feel like Everton do have some kind of history um, as a club in the Premier League, so they probably use some kind of lines. But Mikhail Modric to Everton, I could have seen that happen in the summer. I don't really see that happen in January. So still, I think we can beat Everton comfortably to signing Mikhail Modric. Brighton, your problem is actually not a winger. So ju just chill out, right? Just chill out. The Seagulls, Go to the sea, go to the beach, it's Christmas time, go to the beach and have some rest. Your problem is not even a winger. Your problem is getting a proper number nine. Like, like come for Edin Ketia. You, you, you can sign Edin Ketia. Your problem is not Mikhail Modric. I do not see Brighton splashing all that kind of money um, on Mikhail Modric. So, look, I'm not really going to say that Arsenal are in this race alone, but it feels like though so, right? It, it just it just feels like though it just feels like we are in this race alone. And if Shakhtar try to create um try to create um uh, uh a, 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 you know you know a pricing war, I don't think they will succeed. I don't think you know many clubs are actually ready to go for uh, you know for price wars in January. Look, I've seen. Madrid fighting for Hendrik, a 15-year-old Hendrik, who is actually highly regarded as one of the best Brazilian talents we will ever see at that age. Um, and they're going to pay around 60 million euros for Hendrik. Um, I think they've been battling out with Chelsea, Paris Saint-Germain uh, for, the, for the signature, probably City and Manchester United. But it, it, it seldom happens that clubs would um, accept to be exploited in the winter transfer window uh, by going into price wars. It, it rarely happens. And that is where the, th that's where I think the Shakhtar CEO has just shot themselves um, in the foot by saying it can happen in winter and it's a 50-50. Because you have one realistic club that want Mikhail Modric. You have one realistic club at the moment that can actually pay at least half of a mi uh, half of a hundred million euros to sign the player, and I, I, I don't see how any other, any of these small clubs actually pay up that money to take Mikhail Modric um, in the winter transfer window. Probably in the summer, uh, it can happen. Clubs do break the bank, but we are the most desperate. We're the most suitable destination, and we're the club that needs reinforcement the most. So I believe Mikhail Modric is gonna be ours come January. So um, that is the story. I need your reactions. I need your thoughts uh, in the comment box below. The fact that he was in London means that um, he could have gone to Manchester, though. He could have gone to any other town. But the fact that he was in London, where Arsenal are, where the biggest club that, are, that is you know, trying to sign him uh, is communicate something. The fact that he says that right now we don't want to put any figures, but we are in discussions, massively means they are giving in. They have already given in internally. They have accepted he will be leaving. Externally, they have already started proclaiming um, that 
we might not actually keep him. And I think the next stage for Shakhtar now is go out there, find a potential replacement of Mikhailo Modric. Come on, there's so many out there. We could give you Rhys Nelson. He's a very, very nice lad. He scored a brace against, was it Brentford? Was it, um, what, what, what was that? What game was that? Where Rhys Nelson scored a brace, uh, and we, Nottingham Forest, right? Yeah. He scored a brace against Nottingham Forest when Saka hopped off. So, we could give you this, we could give them Rhys Nelson plus a few coins on top and then get Mikhailo Modric. So, if anything happens on this deal, I'll be the first person to report about it. Their CEO has been in London. Negotiations have now been confirmed by their own CEO and Arsenal now have to play our part. I hope we don't get this wrong like we did with Tillemans, like we did with Hausem Awa, like we did with so many players that could have signed for us, but in the end, we bottled it. I hope we actually do don't uh, bottle this one. I know there's, there is going to be competition. I think there will be a club from anywhere that will try to come in and want to sign him, but I'm not afraid. I still believe Arsenal have this deal and we have to do whatever is necessary to get the deal over the line. So, the ball is in our hands. Do you think Arsenal will bottle this one? Let me know in the comment section. I don't want us to bottle it, but at times we've done a few bottle jobs in the transfer window, in the transfer market. Uh, I, I remember a few. How some awa, that was kind of a bottle job. Mm -hmm. Yuri Tillemans, that was kind of a bottle job as well last summer. I think we could have done better than that. Andre Onana, that was kind of a bottle job um, as well. We could have done better than that. And a few other, you know, bottle jobs that we've done. But we can't take a bottle job in January. Now, there is um, a potential takeover story that we have to talk about. And I think I will be recording a video about whether Arsenal should sell to Indian billionaire. Uh, I think his name is Mukesh or Munkesh. So we'll talk about him and... Try to get your thoughts uh, thoughts on that one as well. Do you think Arsenal probably should sell? Um, the Cronky should sell, or we are we are good where we are. Let's see. I see. I speak to you in the next one.